Good afternoon. I'm Janice Lee. I'm the clinical director for the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research and the chief of the Craniofacial Anomalies and Regeneration section. And today I'm going to talk about what's new in Lloyd Steed syndrome research, specifically in dental development. On the left are some of the structures of the mouth and oral cavity that we examine when we care for our patients and during our research of the dental and craniofacial region. They include the palate, uvula, tongue, teeth, and the lips. And these structures are necessary for speaking, smiling, chewing, swallowing, breathing, and there is the sensation of taste and pain within the oral cavity. Additionally, our research also focused on some of the characteristic changes noted in the teeth in some of our patients with Lloyd Steed's syndrome, specifically the enamel, which makes up the hard tissue of the crown of the tooth. The patients at the NIH are seen by a multidisciplinary craniofacial team, which includes a surgeon, craniofacial orthodontist, nurse and uh, PA, a dentist scientist, and scientists, as we do a research and multi-specialty approach to our care. We also consult several specialists who are at the NIH to provide quality care. We assess our patients in multiple ways, including a comprehensive craniofacial exam, a dental oral exam, and we take advantage of the shed baby teeth, which we can use for our bench research. With our bench and lab research, we are able to study mouse models as well as human teeth. And of course, we take our patient's perspective and experience through their patient reported outcomes. We use several cutting edge technologies to capture all these important findings. And that includes two dimensional photography of the face and mouth, 3D facial photographs, 3D intraoral scans, and comb beam CT, which includes a high resolution, low radiation technology. By using such technology like the 3D oral scan, we can study and quantify unique and critical characteristics of the teeth and adjacent structures, as seen here of our seven-year-old boy with Lloyd Steed syndrome type 2. Using this technology, we can also quantify tooth movement and track enamel loss through color-coded changes, as seen in this image. In our examination of over 40 patients with Lloyd Steed syndrome, we found several common and striking features, including a narrow palate, a bifid uvula, dental crowding, and enamel changes. And you can imagine that the enamel changes were quite striking as seen here on the lower left, as there was a lot of variation between patients which piqued our interest. Through our careful analysis of these changes, we developed a grading scale of the severity of enamel changes or defects as seen in these figures. Grade zero showed no, no enamel change, while grade one and grade two showed discoloration and some pitting, while grade three showed extensive pitting of the enamel and grade four showed enamel loss and flaking. Through this semi-quantitative analysis, we identified that patients with Lloyd Steed's type 2 or TGF beta receptor 2 mutation had the greatest variability and severity. And currently we are exploring why this particular mutation may be prone to such variability in tooth development. We did a deeper dive in the highly unusual loss of an animal. Among our patients, we found patient A with Lloyd Steed syndrome type 2, whose prior dental x-rays demonstrate that he was able to create enamel before eruption of his permanent molar or tooth number 31. But upon exposure to the mouth and masticatory forces, the enamel flaked off as seen in the, X, uh, the photograph on the far right. Is it the composition or is it the structure that results in crumbling enamel? To help us answer this question, we were fortunate to meet patient B, whose mother kept his baby teeth and his unaffected sibling's teeth, which we used as a control. Patient B also had Lloyd Steed syndrome type 2 with a different mutation change. You can see on the SCM or the scanning electron microscopy that the sibling has the normal crisscross or decusation pattern of enamel. The bundles of enamel rods appear to go in multiple different directions providing the strength of the enamel. While the patient has a loss of that decusation and has parallel enamel rods, which in fact reduced the hardness and explained the crumbling of the teeth. Our scientist, Dr. 
Olivier de Vergé was able to examine the tooth structure of the wild type mice or mice without the mutation, and that's the image on the left, and compare them to the tooth structure of the mouse or mice with a similar TGF beta receptor 2 mutation, the two images on the right. And you can see that the normal cross pattern is present on the left, and there's a loss of that pattern on the right. And in fact, the enamel rods are straight, explaining the weakness of the enamel structure. You can imagine that these oral and dental findings can affect the oral health quality of life. When we had our patients answer the oral health quality of life questionnaire, or the OHIP-14, we found that our patients with Lloyd-Steet syndrome had higher scores in red, which indicates a worse oral health quality of life compared to their unaffected family members seen in green. Our data also showed that the worst quality of life scores seem to be related to hypersensitivity of teeth, possibly due to enamel changes as seen on the picture on the right, or the scores were related to TMJ abnormalities like joint pain, limited range of motion, and joint sounds, possibly due to retrognathia and a malocclusion as seen on the pictures along the lower right. Many of our patients had several questions about what to do for these dental problems, and some of them are listed here on the left. Here are some options that can be done at home. However, several of the options do require a dentist or a specialist, such as a pediatric dentist or an orthodontist, for complete treatment. Some of the treatment options are shown here. When a patient has enamel changes or defects, especially in kids, Stainless steel crowns may be necessary. When there's a narrow palate, an orthodontist may recommend orthodontic expansion. And when there's dental crowding, orthodontic treatment with braces may be necessary to correct the crowding and the malocclusion. If you're interested in reading about our research, these are the papers and the talented fellows and students who led these research studies. If you're interested in learning more about the NIDCR craniofacial study, the natural history of craniofacial anomalies, and developmental growth variants, please don't hesitate to look us up at clinicaltrials.gov, and there's our identifier, or don't hesitate to contact our research nurse, Pam Orzakowski, at the contact numbers below. Thank you.